Now it's finally time to decide a new alternative. If you didn't specify any costs or other considerations, then you're probably just going to make your decision based only on the rank of each alternative. But if you do have any other considerations to take into account, you'll be able to make much more effective decisions using the value for money chart. So here we're going to go over how to do that. In my example, I'm comparing different proposals for how to best allocate government spending. And in addition to the scores, I also have to take into account the cost for funding each of these proposals, the confidence in the cost estimates, and whether or not the proposals fit with the government core business. And I've factored each of these variables in by changing the axes, the bubble size, and the bubble color. In general, you want to look at the alternatives in this green quadrant, which shows you the alternatives that have the best value for your money. And the other thing you want to look at is this orange line here, which is the efficiency frontier, or otherwise known as the Pareto frontier. This line shows you all of the alternatives that are unambiguously better than all of the others. So taking those two things into account, I see that my best choices would probably be Proposal E and Proposal W. Now, if I had made my decision by looking only at the ranks of my alternatives, then I would have probably chosen Proposal W because that alternative has the highest score. However, by looking at the chart, it looks like Proposal E might actually be a better option because it has half the cost of Proposal W and only a slightly lower score. And by looking at the bubble color, you can see that it also fits better with my government core business than Proposal W does. So these three things combined make me actually lean towards choosing Proposal E, even though Proposal W has a higher ranking. Another thing that can be useful when narrowing down your options is the y over x ratio. If you have the y-axis set to show the total scores of your alternatives, and the x-axis to show the cost, then the y over x ratio is your benefits to cost ratio. This tells you how much benefit you're getting for the cost. The higher the y over x ratio, the more benefit you're getting for the cost. You can see this ratio either by clicking on any alternative on a chart and then looking at the details in the menu on the right, or you can look at the table below, which has the y over x ratio of each of your alternatives in one of the columns. You can sort your alternatives by y over x ratio by clicking on the header, which will sort them by increasing value, or if you click again, then it'll sort them by decreasing value. This makes it much easier for you to see which of your alternatives have the higher benefits to cost ratio. You can narrow down your choices by filtering out your alternatives based on any variable, like the criteria, the score, other considerations, or in my case, I want to look at the y over x ratio. Just by looking at the chart, I'm going to say that I want to look at only those proposals that have a y over x ratio greater than 2. I can filter out all the other alternatives by clicking on the light gray funnel icon up here next to the header and entering the value I want to filter by. So I'm going to put in greater than 2. And that makes my list so much shorter and it also removes a lot of clutter from my chart which helps me focus only on the alternatives that are the most promising to me. Now, if you look at the table, you see that actually Proposal S and Proposal R have the highest y over x ratio. So shouldn't those be my most preferable alternatives? Well, on the chart, you see that mostly the high y over x ratio is because they have such a low cost. And this is a good example of why you shouldn't rely only on this ratio to find the best value for your money. Because if you click on Proposal S, it shows you that most of the effects of this proposal are actually either neutral or very small. So I would gain very little from spending my money on this alternative. Proposal E, on the other hand, has stronger results. So 
It depends on how much it matters to you to get better results, but also spend more money. Notice that the bubble size of proposal E is also smaller than that of proposal S and R, which is actually less desirable to me. So again, I really have to think about what am I willing to give up for having a better score. Once you've decided on an alternative, you can select or reject any alternative either by clicking on that alternative in the chart and then clicking on select or reject in the menu on the right, or you can go to the table below and click on select or reject here. Once you've done this, this alternative will disappear from the chart. This is because by default, the chart only shows you alternatives that are marked as undecided, but if you want to change this, you can always do so by going to Options in the menu on the right and selecting which alternatives you want to show. So now that you've decided on an alternative, it's time to factor in your budget. This budgeting feature below the table here is going to appear if you select the X value to represent any summable variable. So for example, the cost. Then you're going to see the sums of the costs of all the alternatives that you've accepted, the ones you've rejected, and the ones that you haven't yet decided on, as well as the sum of all of the costs of these alternatives combined. But keep in mind that these sums only include the alternatives that haven't been hidden by a filter. If you want to remove a filter, you can do so either by clicking on the funnel icon in the appropriate category and clicking remove, or by going to the options in the menu on the right and clicking clear all filters. Now in the budget field, enter what your budget is and it'll subtract the cost of the alternatives you've selected and tell you how much money you have left to spend. If you have any money left over, you can either select another alternative or just choose to do nothing. It's up to you. This feature is also really useful for any other summable costs, like for example, how much staff you have available to carry out a project. So now that you know how to select an alternative, go out into the world and make your best decisions.